I use landscapes to inform me about landscape evolution and also about past climate. So I study rivers, I study lakes, sand dunes, floods, and I study weather. I'm an economic geologist and I look at the, uh, the value of rocks, so ore deposits, mineral deposits, coal, oil, gas. So I'm particularly interested in coastal ecosystems and how they adapt to climate change. I really love being out in the field. I was always interested in being outside and in the environment, even as a young child. I would say the most amazing opportunity I've had in the last few years is when Lake Eyre actually filled in 2010 and 2011. We flew in by a chopper, landed on a peninsula that was surrounded by water, so it seemed like I was surrounded by ocean and we sampled and collected data over a period of five days completely on our own. And the helicopter came back five days later and picked us up. More recently I've been going to the Himalayas, Central Asia, South America and all through Southeast Asia. It's big enough that it's vibrant and there, there are lots of ideas floating around. You can bounce ideas off colleagues. There are excellent uh, laboratory facilities, excellent uh, field equipment for me to undertake field work in remote areas. We take cores and we bring them back to the lab where we'll then slice them up and start doing analyses on the cores. As a field geologist, really all you need is a hammer and a magnifying glass. We're also using digital technology, so we're using iPhones and iPads to look at remote sensing data. My particular interest is in determining the time of things, so geochronology. Um, using scientific methods to tell you the age of things, how old things are, when, when were things deposited, when did things start. I examine dust emissions from arid landscapes and I'm interested in where dust goes and what it does to the environment. I've been right up the top of the Southern Alps collecting dust samples on the glaciers of the west coast of the South Island of New Zealand, South America and the Andes where we've collected peat cores and we're looking for dust layers in organic peats spent time in the Argentinian Pampa region collecting samples of potential dust source sediments. UOW is, is good because there's a strong science platform. The basics of science, chemistry, physics, maths are very strong here. It's positioned geographically really well for doing anything that's coastal. And with Australia being a coastal population, I think about 75% of our population now live within 50 kilometres of the coast. It's ideal geographically from that perspective. We have an escarpment three kilometres from the university. We have warm temperate rainforest. We have a diverse range of vegetation communities to look at. We've got rock platforms to study rocky coasts. We've got sandy beaches to study coastal dynamics. We have a history of industrial development impacting on our natural landscape so we can understand the role of humans. We have a national park 30 kilometres to the north of us. We have the Blue Mountains to the west of us. It's, it's like a puzzle and you've collected all these pieces and you're pulling them all together. And while you're in the middle of it, it's such a mess. But once you're in your computer and you've got all your results and you're piecing it all together, the picture emerges and it's, it's often a really neat story that you can share. Go into the lab, you can really get to the minute details. That's sort of the building blocks of building up that bigger picture. And I just feel, you know, that's where I really get the intellectual stimulation and the sort of excitement from. After my PhD, I went and worked for state government doing research as well. But you can also go into the policy area in, in government, federal, state, local government. You can then get into management of ecosystems and environments and conservation. And then there's all the NGO sort of world where you're working for those non-government, non-for-profit organisations. As a student, I simply ask myself the question, do I want to be stuck in an office wearing a tie every day? And the answer was no.